Um, the story uh, I'm starting with is, is definitely the Internet of Things story where we think at Orange that it will uh, impact our everyday life. And that's the main point. It's really about everyday life, not about things that are not that important. Um, it's so important that we've put that in our strategy. Uh, we, we are considering that the open innovation and in particular the things we can do through APIs, etc., are a very, very important thing. This is how you're building an ecosystem. This is how you, you can work with more partners and more companies. And we've, uh, we've even um, put uh, two topics at the center of things we'll do for the next five years, which is pretty unusual from a big company like Orange to say, okay, we'll only work on two topics, which are the mobile banking and the Internet of Things, where we're expecting 1 billion euros of additional revenues on those two topics by 2018. So it's important. I'm not going to bother you with all the wearables and all those objects. They, they become so frequent that now, Analysts have categories describing the objects by the, 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 the part of the body to where it clings. So you have heads, wrists, etc., etc. So by the way, for the, all the people in the room who are 40 or more, we're just recreating a story about a character you know, uh, who's been present 40 years from now, 30 years from now. We're recreating this kind of bionic uh, $6 million man. By the way, in France, it was called the three billion dollar man. So you can expect that to what a dollar was worth at that time. <laughs> and you're seeing the, the other thing is that Jamie has n is priceless, of course. Um, so um, the story is really about augmenting the people. It's not only about augmenting the home, etc., but augmenting the people. And it's the important story about uh, all those wearables or objects. If not, you're falling into some other character story, uh, also from the 80s, this one. If you're wearing wearables, at the end it ends like that. It has no particular uh, interest, you're, you're just collecting gadgets. Um, so what we're seeing is that those wearables are evolving. And the way they're evolving is that uh, you're not showing them off, you're just hiding them. They are becoming invisibles. And uh, we're seeing that and what happens to the, uh, uh, of course, to the, um, to the human beings is happening to the cars. Now the cars are starting to carry those little dongles that are just taking all the data and, cr and connecting the cars to an ecosystem of services. Which means that by the time you're plugging that, since you have APIs in the cars, thanks to the dongle, you have APIs in the metering system, thanks to the dongle. So it's just a question of uh, having a developer spending two hours and you have a perfect system where the car is paying the matter and you're sitting and relaxing in your office. You can have a better system by plugging a camera so you can exactly know when the policy is coming or not. Don't do that, just an idea. But you, you can have objects communicating with objects. And just to pay tribute to um, the generic object, um, with things like that, um, with the uh, uh, sensi object, with mother, uh, well, the object is not the upper part, it's not the babushka you have here, it's the gateway. The object is the little cookie that you can put on anything and suddenly it's connected. So you have now even the paradigm of uh, uh, a kind of generic connected object with which you can transform into object into a connected one without spending the one million euros or pounds in design, in works, etc. to have that in the, in the stores. Uh, there are figures everywhere. We're even finding ways to represent that in, a, in a, an innovative way. Uh, the only thing we know about all those elements, uh, because when, when we're speaking about trillions, for instance, the, the figures given uh, uh, by McKinsey or, or Cisco or Gartner, um, I, f I don't know, if, if does anybody in the room has a, a single idea of what's the world GDP in trillions? No? Yes, no one. Uh, it's 75 trillions, according to Wikipedia. 75 trillions. When, when someone says, like Cisco, that this market will be 19 trillions, it means that it, is, it starts to be comparable, comparable to, uh, to the world GDP. 16 GDP is the US, uh, 16 um, trillion uh, is, is, the, is the US GDP. So this means that what those very serious people are saying is that all of that, the IoT, the big data, etc., is going to be uh, 
uh, an impact that can be compared to uh, such big um, countries, etc. So it's not about creating value, it's just about seeing this value shifting from one side to the other. But obviously it's massive. When we're seeing all that, the only thing we're, we're seeing is that um, the common element about all those objects, whether they're sitting in the home or in the car, etc., is that they produce data. As, and the inspiration we have with, uh, with data here, uh, and uh, the slide is blocked, uh, the inspiration we have is that um, uh, with data you can, uh, you can have um, things like what you can track, you can know, what you can know you can enhance. And I'm applying that to myself for the last six years. I'm a quantified self-geek. This means I'm following my figures. I know I, uh, how I walk, how I sleep. You have nothing about my weight, it's censored. Yeah, I'm not sharing that with you for, for obvious reasons. Um, the only thing I've been able to change thanks to that is the way I'm sleeping. I used to be uh, thinking that I was a small sleeper spending four to six hours a night maximum, uh, where everybody was telling me that uh, any human being should be seven to nine hours per, per night. Uh, so I've changed that thanks to my wristband, and I, I can tell the difference. I'm less anxious, I, I speak uh, uh, slowly now. Uh, so I really can tell the difference, and all the people in my, back, in my background, in my environment can tell the difference. So I've experienced one of those first rules we've, uh, we've seen in that market, is that the behavior change will be the killer app of the IoT. Don't try to find something else than behavior change. That's true for the wearables, that's true for the cars, Every time you notice that you're, you're, saving, uh, you're saving almost your life uh, instead of saving one minute because you're driving, uh, driving like, a, like a nut, you're experiencing that uh, behavior change. And that's really important in each of the, of the domain. That's so important that if we look at the first uh, sentences that, has, that have really impacted us, uh, I remember this sentence from Mark Bertolini, uh, from the from Aetna in the US saying that we, this data is a kind of new oil and uh, we can build something with that taking into account that we're in this kind of third age of the internet where, where we have a digital tsunami of data, digital traces, social networks, etc. which is in fact creating a new model where we see the world through this data. We have a new uh, description of the world and it's the first time in history that we have that. So of course IoT is covering uh, an incredible number of topics and uh, any, any domain we're looking at, was it smart home, was it uh, the, the, the energy uh, consumption, uh, the retail, etc., is, is a billion dollar business uh, per se. And uh, when we're speaking about the data volume, of course, we're, we're reaching zettabytes. For anyone remembering the kilobyte, it's, uh, it's a lot. And we still have figures in the Greek alphabet, by the way. So the question for all the European companies is, will, will the results of the big data IoT race and competition will be like that? Where you have uh, nice uh, competitors uh, winning the game and any European player can have the, the chocolate medal, but no more. Uh, where, in fact, in Europe, most of the time when the, the technology train is passing, we behave like that, in fact. Uh, we, we simply look at the train passing and uh, you know that technology train are not passing several times, they pass only once. And remember the story, it was the same for the uh, mobile OS, for the search engine, etc. I know there are people from Google in the, in the room. Um, we simply let the train pass and, and watch it. So it's important to do something by understanding what we can do with those objects and data. Uh, understanding that it's not only a question of putting them into order, it's not a question of uh, selling them, because by the way, uh, the wearable stores uh, will be like that, they will become gadget. If you don't put the objects into and the services into a daily life uh, usage, uh, it's a simple gadget. 
Um, and of course, for all those elements, privacy, security are always the top issues that we're seeing uh, at the first steps we're making. This is why we've started with a charter. That was the beginning of the story for us in 2013. We, we have clearly stated and defined rules that we are going to commit on with regards to the data and the services that are going to be built on top of this uh, personal data. Uh, because we think that it's one of the examples that is showing this growing impact of this uh, cybercrime uh, and all the, the things which are around the user. And, and obviously cybercrime today, even if people are not perceiving it like that, is an organized crime. You have tens of thousands of uh, people uh, just uh, trying to steal things from you. So our role into that is definitely to try to help our customer not to be uh, caught. Uh, and we, we have a rule for, for that. We, we think that the user's data must belong to users. That's a simple rule, but it's another one that we are definitely seeing as an important one if we want to, to get the most important point for uh, building services on top of this, um, this data, which is confidence. By the way, we're creating this confidence thanks to the kind of alliances we can have, thanks to the, the work we can do with partners, then we can have something which is relevant and which is accepted. So basically what Orange is doing uh, into that, I was speaking of the usual things that any telcos should do, which is just about distribution and connectivity, but also new things that we're doing with connected services and data, uh, data uh, offers. Uh, just to give you an example for connectivity, not only we're bringing things that are using Wi-Fi in the home, LoRa uh, networks to extend the uh, reach and capabilities of our cellular networks about Bluetooth, etc., but any potential network that can be used to uh, answer the needs of the, uh, of the IoT. Because our vision is really to think that we have to enable services. We don't care about the object per se, we care about the services that can be built on top of that. And this is uh, also because we think that just along this Internet of Things, we have big data and we have this kind of Internet of Data where we see that the value is for sure. Uh, we are just looking at each of the individual ecosystems. They are probably uh, linked one to the other. Uh, and here we've represented probably what we think are going to be the most important in the next uh, two or three years. So you see that home is positioned in between. Doesn't mean that it will be the larger. Uh, I've not put city here because city is a combination of several things, which home can be as well. Uh, but we know that there, there are some markets that will be progressing faster than other. We're just trying to bring solutions to all of them uh, and bring solutions to the businesses which are behind, to bank, insurance, etc., etc. Um, a few things about Home Live that we've started to deliver last year. So it's a, it's a pretty simple offer which is bridging and bundling uh, devices and service uh, just in order to have people do the first step of their smart home environment. So uh, you have a gateway, you have a few sensors, smoke sensors, etc. Um, and it's the little and first step into making a larger thing where we can connect thanks to uh, some generic capabilities. We can connect all the uh, objects uh, in the house and for the, um, the individuals living at the house, the wearables, etc. And uh, to, to do this, we have a global platform, which is called Data Venue, uh, which is a simple thing around data, which is here to collect, store, secure, aggregate, and give access to data. Uh, it's, it means that those five verbs are really the most important for us and are really the thing where we, we really want to be excellent. The rest uh, will be done with partners. So um, basically it works like that. You have objects on one side, you have enterprise data sources uh, above, and, and we have several solutions in order not only, to, not only to be able to go from the object to the connected object to the data which is being collected, and then to the data being analyzed, to the services using the data being analyzed. And all of this, uh, with a total respect of the privacy of all the rules have been, uh, have been uh, listing before. So um, we have two offers that we've just um, we've just started to uh, 
to deliver to the market on the B2B market, which are live object and flexible data. Live object taking all the connectivity, all the selection, the management of the object, the connection of the object and the composition. And on the other side, the flexible data, which is basically using the data to power services, bringing some solutions to anonymize that, etc. Um, and so the, the approach we're taking into that is not to say, okay, we have everything and we answer the needs. We're going step by step. We're forming partnership. We're working with, uh, with uh, customers, with partners, and really in a kind of co-innovation way because we understand that this topic is really in the middle of the uh, core transformation, the core digital transformation of uh, most of our customers. So we are we're trying to see if all those elements that we're considering a kind of minimum viable platform will be answering the needs uh, of, uh, of all those, uh, those customers. And just to give an, a last example of uh, things we do thanks to that, we consider that the IoT ecosystem, in particular the one you're having at home, is, is completely fragmented. And uh, to understand that, instead of uh, um, considering that we will serve a particular segment, we are bringing interfaces. And uh, we, we are starting to, uh, uh, to work with, uh, with our partners uh, on uh, using an SDK that we've developed and which is just bridging, it's, a, it's part of the live object offer. It's, uh, it's an SDK which is having one single interface to be able to manage the full number of, um, of objects that an individual will have. So uh, uh, with this SDK, not only Orange is able to, uh, to give a complete interface, but any of our partners is able to integrate that in his app in order for the customer to see a consistent user interface around the home, around all the objects that uh, uh, someone will have, whether he has 15, 20 or more. This is mainly the things I wanted to, uh, to cover here. All the things we're doing are always uh, available uh, as APIs on our Orange Partner uh, uh, portal. And, um, and the th main things and main takeaway to end with is that we're seeing this Internet of Things evolving as an Internet of Everything, of course. Um, and we're just considering that uh, at this point we're speaking about the things, but we'll forget the things just to care about the services for sure. Thank you.